This hack tip is brought to you by Hack5 and viewers like you. Support us directly at hackshop.com. Welcome to Hack Tip, the show where we break down concepts, tools, and techniques for hackers, gurus, and IT ninjas. I'm Shannon Morris, and today we are checking out Maltigo's graphing options. Yay, fun! Now, there are many ways to choose to see your new graphs. So say you've already created one. So far, I've only shown you one way to display a graph in the Maltigo GUI, but you can change it if you want. So yay, you can make it look pretty. So, so far, we've only shown you one way to show your graph, and honestly, it's uh, kind of janky. So we have other options. Each and every single graph that you create will be listed in the main window, selected on top. And when you save, that name is obviously going to change to your brand new name instead of just being new graph or whatever it says at the beginning. Now in my free version that I have downloaded of Maltigo, I also have several different ways to view the same graph. I have my main view, bubble, and entity list. I really like bubble because it's a fun word to say. Bubble, bubble. The main view is the one that we have been using previously. So this one shows you basically a drop down. So it's kind of look like a tree if you want to. The bubble view lets you view a graph with a whole bunch of little round bubbles instead of the normal icons. And it'll also be kind of circular. So if we take a look at my screen, first I have up here the main view. So this one has a whole bunch of different trees. I like to call them trees because that's what they look like. And then we have bubble view. So this one is a little bit crazy. It's kind of out there, but I can also change the views a little bit so you can see them. Each one has a little bubble and I can make it very circular if I want to. And then last off, we have this one called the entity list, which basically lists all of your different entities that are in your graph. Very, very easy to use, and you can sort that one depending on the name of the node, the type, the value, et cetera, et cetera. Now, each of the views lets you change the way the graph is displayed as well as different layouts. So for example, the main and bubble view show pretty much the same views. If I go back to the main view, I have a couple of different options under here. I have the first one, which we've seen already, I have the graph tree, which looks more like a tree, and then I have the pyramid, which more looks more like a genealogical family type tree thing going on. So uh, you have all those different options. You ha also have these circular versions as well. Now you will notice with a lot of these that it's very hard to see what in the world is going on with this. So what I would do is go back to my investigate tab and either zoom to vit, zoom 100%, or whatever I feel is best for the nature of that graph. So for this one, I would probably choose this version of the graph and then zoom into whatever section I choose to look at. And I'm most interested in this section, so I'll just keep it up there for now. So very easy to use. Now in the bubble view, and I'll click on that one, I have all of the same different graph layouts. So I can do the regular tree, the more genealogical pyramid one. I also have the circular one. Now for this one in particular, I really like the circular version of it but I also have these options over at the end as well. So I can make the bubbles a little bit bigger if I want to, so it's a little bit easier to see each one. And I can make them smaller or larger depending on if they are parents or children. So I prefer this one with the really big bubbles in the center, and then I prefer to zoom in on whatever section that I'm looking at again. And it's going to show you everything in different colors depending on what kind of uh, transform you had created for that specific thing. Now last off, of course, is the entity list. So for this one, I also wanted to mention, you can right click on each one and you can still run all the different transforms that you want, but it's not gonna give you that nice graph unless you go back to your main view, obviously. So I'm gonna have a little bit more about each of these right after the break, so stay tuned. The Hack Shop is Hack5's premier store for all your pen testing needs, including one of my favorites, the USB rubber ducky. It looks like a flash drive and it types like a keyboard, and it can type scripts into a computer crazy fast, like this week's favorite from Clips. And this is so cute. I'm sorry, but I just love this one. It's a script that pulls up his wife's favorite song on YouTube, minimizes it, and then it opens up a notepad doc to write out I love you and it makes an ASCII picture of her. because. That's freaking adorable. Of course, we couldn't do this show without your support, so we would like to thank you with something special. Use the coupon code SNUBS with any order for your very own signed hack tip stickers. And of course, thank you so much for supporting the show. 
Okay, now that you got your graph looking the way that you want, making it look all pretty and stuff, I wanted to get back over to those windows on the side, over there. So first off, you wanna open your properties tab. This is one that I wanna check out first. Now we've already gone over the detail view down there, but if I highlight properties view, I can click on this and I can actually edit anything that I want through here. So I can change the type, I can change the site, etc. Uh, I can change the website if I want to, whether it's SNL, SSL enabled or not, uh, what port that it's being redirected through, and I can also check out URLs and change information under the graph info, so actually what it looks like on the graph. Now, if you bookmark a node, this is kind of interesting. So I'm gonna click on this and I'm gonna choose a green star, so under bookmark. When I do that and then I go ahead and close it, you're gonna see a little green star appear on your node. Ha, huh, I like little green stars, how cute. And of course, I already went through the detail view in my past hack tip. If you haven't watched that yet, definitely check it out. And lastly, I also wanted to mention searching. So this is kind of cool. You can search for a specific term located in a node with the search bar in the detail view. Let's check that out. So if I click on detail, and I'm gonna choose two different ones with shift. Let's pull up detail. Now I have hack5.org and hack5.org as in the website and the server. I'm also gonna choose Darren. Now I'll reopen this and now we see Darren located on here as well. Now with the search view, I can either search through each and every transform, which can be very useful again, if you have a very, very long list that you need to look through. I can also add an exclamation mark at the beginning to exclude any sort of word. So see, I don't, I don't care about Darren. So I'm gonna remove him from my list. Bam, hit enter, he disappears from the list. Now if I click remove the exclamation mark and hit enter. It's just gonna include Darren because he's not located on the information for hack5.org, the website, or the server. That's kind of interesting. And you can also hit control F to do a little bit more of a detailed search. Bam, so many options because who doesn't like options? Now, of course, let me know what you think. Send me a comment below or email us tips at hack5.org and be sure to check out our sister show, Hack5, for more great stuff just like this. And I'll be there as always, reminding you to trust your technolust. <laughs>